everyone. This is Hiba from My Little Journal, and today I'm excited to share with you my new daily journal for 2023. So, you know, I thought at some point that I would do a like planner journal lineup video for you and share all the things I'm going to be using. But I just thought this is easier just to kind of share what I was doing in 2022 and what I will be doing in 2023. So anyways, let's get to it. So I do have a lineup video for my members only uh, where I'm sharing all the projects that I did throughout the year, flip throughs of all of them, and what I'm going to be using in 2023. But for you guys, I'm just going to do a quick like overview of my, of my uh, 2022 daily journal. And then I'm going to share with you what I'm going to do for 2023 and what I'm going to use and then probably set it up together. But anyways, you guys, let's get to it. I'm not going to do a quick, like a flip through of my daily journal after the pen. I'm just going to do it really quick. Basically, like I said, I do have a flip through of all my projects for my members only. And that's a membership here on YouTube. If you want to be a part of it, I do have it linked in the description box for you. But basically, every month I was setting this up with you guys. And I was um, kind of uh, keeping it simple and easy for myself. Uh, so I was basically stamping out the dates, uh, just doing a title page, things like that. And then coming in throughout the month and filling it all in with my journaling. And I just love how these turned out. This project is basically one of my favorites. I love flipping through it. I love seeing all the pages done and journaled in um, but for 2023 I am going to be doing something totally different uh, I think I burnt myself out with this I've been doing the Archer and Olive and kind of journaling in this way for the past like I don't know um four years now if I'm not mistaken um, I went into a larger size, I believe, this year, and I love it, but I'm ready to move on to new things and try new different ways to journal in. So, we are saying goodbye to my beautiful Archer and Olive. I love these journals. They are beautiful. I love setting them up, but again, I just want to try something new. You never know. It might be a fail, and I'll come back to this, but for now, I want to try new products new ways to journal. And I wanted to share with you my new daily journal and how I'm going to be documenting my days through 2023. And this is my new journal. I have been inspired by the amazing Nancy Damiano and Julie from Plan to Create. They both use the Hemlock and Oak and you guys, this is gorgeous. I did take a look. I went through it and I just had to share it with you. Hopefully set it up with you as well. So um, I bought, let's, let's take a look at what I got. I did get the tabs as well. So we will probably put those together. Um, but I purchased the Daily Dated Planner. <laughs> okay, so I purchased the Daily dated planner and you guys this thing is huge and I also got it in the brown because you guys know me I just love this color and it's fabric and beautiful like it's that linen look how thick this thing is it's like an encyclopedia but it is gorgeous and I have to say everything about this is luxurious and I love that so look how pretty that is. Even just the, the intro page is gorgeous. You have a place for you to add uh, who this belongs to, an overview of what's in your planner, uh, 2023 calendar, 2024. And I love this page. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but maybe I will kind of add tidbits of the month. I just love that they have the months on the one side and then a lot of space for you to journal if you want to or even do doodle. Holidays, so the Canadian and US. And um, by the way, Hemlock and Oak is Canadian based. 
there's so much good things about this company. It's a woman owned small business. I definitely recommend to check out their link. I'm going to add it in the description box for you. And I also do have a discount code for you. If you use my discount code Hiba Al Sabai 10, you get 10% off your next purchase. And believe me, it is so worth it. Yes, it is pricey, but it's gorgeous. And then you have this page that says important. You get into your calendar. So this is your calendar over overview. This is January. And then you kind of get into your dailies. And like I said, this is dated. So you have the date on top and everything else is so light and airy. I love the white paper. It's nice and thick. Um, I'm just in love. I went through this a million times and I think it is gorgeous. I'm not gonna do a complete flip through of this because there's loads of videos on YouTube and a lot of people use them on Instagram and share their projects on there. But for me, I wanted to focus on the setup and putting together a few weeks in my January. As you can see, um, this is daily. So each page is a day. Before I used to do a whole week on two pages and now I have a page a day. So my whole setup is different. Um, I'm thinking even my videos are gonna be different. I might start coming in and doing a setup and probably throughout the month do a few pages with you or something. I'm not sure yet, but I'm excited to play with this. Like I said, it is beautiful, it is huge. Now the only, only thing I did not like about this, and this really is on me, I'm not even sure if this is written in their, on their website or not, because this is huge, it is such a big book, right? It is humongous. The first pages, you this thing is not gonna lay flat. I tried, I tried everything. It's really hard to get this to lay flat. As you can see, you can't get this to lay flat and I'm so worried that I'm gonna try too hard and kind of break the spine. So you're gonna have some space back here. The one thing that I figured out that's gonna work for me is probably use the lid. So I'm going to have to put the lid behind my notebook when I'm writing or stamping or whatever the case is because it's not going to lay flat. The only time this journal is going to lay flat is basically like, I don't know, where are we? Um, no, not even February. I think you're going to go deeper probably yeah, around April and March that this is going to lay flat and you're not going to have a problem. But is it laying flat totally before that? No, it is not. Um, so as you can see, I think I should do this. So yeah, around March, April, this thing is going to lay flat. But when you have it open to like January, this isn't laying flat. It is just too thick to lay flat. I wish that that was different um, because that right away was one of my struggles. I was like, oh my gosh, this doesn't lay flat and it's gonna be hard to write in here, but I think I can manage until March because I'm, I'm really loving this and I wanted to be honest with you. So you're never gonna get the perfect journal or the perfect uh, planner. You're always gonna miss out on certain things. Yes, they do have an undated, which is two books and they both lay flat from the get-go, but I really wanted the calendar before the month starts. I don't like the fact that when you get the undated, all the calendars are at the beginning and then you get into the rest. I just don't like that. I like to have my calendar to separate the months and the days. And um, I don't know, it just made more sense to me to purchase the big one the one that's dated and anyway, they're just gorgeous. And the colors you get, the options for the dated was so much more. So I just went with this one. But I also, real quick, I forgot to mention, you get three beautiful ribbons in this journal. Like look how beautiful these ribbons are and the colors, they're just gorgeous. And I love that they're three. You can have one for your calendar, you can have one for your day. You can have one for the back of this. Whatever you want to do with it, you have the ribbon for it. So 
I'm excited for that. This is gorgeous. I'm really excited for it. And this gonna this thing is gonna get so chunky once I start because it's already so big and hefty. So I don't know how this is gonna ca uh, like hold up, but hopefully it does throughout the year because I'm so excited to use it. So anyways, um, that is my new daily journal. I will put the tabs on here as well today. I love that they have this guide for you to add your tabs to the months, which is pretty cool. But I grabbed these beautiful yellowish tabs, mustardy yellow. I thought they would look really nice with this brown. So we're gonna put the tabs on here and probably start setting up my months. Now, um, I did share with my members how I'm thinking of using this, but I'm still thinking that I'm gonna add dates maybe. We shall see, maybe like a focus word. Um, in my daily journal, let me share that real quick. In my 2022 daily journal, I like to use big words. So one big word that kind of tells me what happened that day. And if I look concert, rest, uh, lathe really, just things like that, pool, henna, I know what happened kind of in one word. And I'm hoping to do the same in my um, Hemlock and Oak. I was thinking to use this top portion here for my one word uh it just keeps it cohesive and then I can just play in the bottom almost <laughs> so we shall see let's start setting it up and get it ready for 2023 I'm so excited and I hope you enjoy watching this video and as always I will have everything linked in the description box for you and if there's any codes that I can share and give you a little discount I will add those as okay, well. Okay, guys, let's start uh, setting up January in my Hemlock and Oak. I'm going to start with my calendar. But before I start, I will end up adding my box cover behind my journal cover because I want to make sure that I am able to stamp. And as I said earlier, this uh, daily journal is so bulky. It doesn't lay flat, so I need that to help me stamp and journal and all that good stuff. Anyways, for my calendar overview, I am going to be stamping January across. I used these large, beautiful alphas from Studio Calico, and I decided to color them in with a, a really beautiful mustard yellow. I'm trying to keep the colors very subtle because whatever I end up adding into my journal, I don't want it to clash with whatever I added ahead of time. So once I color in January, I'm going to grab a paper person shop stamp set. It's the year of the rabbit and it had a stamp that had 2023 in a circle and it was perfect to fill in that gap between my January and the top of my journal and uh, it's just a great way to add more color. So for my calendar overview, my thoughts was doodling something every day. It's going to represent each day my little doodles or my stamping or my stickers. And I've done this before in my Hobonichi years ago. So I thought this is the time to try it again. And I really enjoyed it back in the day. So that's what I'm going to use my calendar overview for. So this month, it is my birthday and my husband's. So I basically stamped a birthday cake to represent his birthday and mine. And I stamped Here We Go Again for the beginning of the month. I will grab my zig dot markers to add a little color to my dates. And I also want to add my tabs. I totally forgot about my tabs. So I'm just going to grab my really beautiful mustard yellow tabs. As you guys know, mustard yellow is one of my favorite colors. So I thought the tabs worked perfectly with that brown cover. And I love that they have a guide. For your tabs, it was really easy to put together with the little guide. So I just use it to guide me to put my tabs in my daily journal. And once I'm done adding my tabs, we're going to start setting up January in my Hemlock and Oak. So while I'm adding my tabs, I wanted to let you in on my vision for this new daily journal for me. I was thinking that I would come in every month, set up 
each month or that month. And basically, just add stickers, stamping. And then when the month starts, I can always come in and add a little bit more once I start journaling. Basically, what I'm trying to say, it's totally different than my Archer and Olive daily journal. And if you've been watching that for a while, this is not it. <laughs> I'm keeping this very simple, my setups. And I would like it if you let me know. If you enjoy this, I can always come in later on throughout the month and share a video of me putting together a few days, journaling in this, and how it looks afterwards. So just let me know if that's something you want to see. But for now, I'm going to use the same week stamp to stamp throughout the whole month. I love this. This is a great way to add color. I like the outline week stamp. And it makes the process so much easier than what I used to do in my Archer and Olive. That was tedious. I had to stamp out, you know, every week look different than the other. But this time around, I'm just using one stamp each month. I want to try this and see if I enjoy it. If I don't, I can change it up in February. But for now, I'm using one stamp set to stamp out sun, uh, Monday through Sunday. And that's why you can see me going back and forth, just trying to stamp all the Mondays all at once while I have my stamp out, all the Sundays all at once while I have my stamp out. Once I stamp out the days of the week, I am going to start working on every single page separately. But like I said earlier, the process is so much easier because I am not creating something from scratch, if that makes sense. So I'm almost done stamping the days of the week. And what I thought I would do is color in one week at a time. So if I'm going to color in the first week with this gray marker, the next week is going to be with a different color. That way I can kind of uh, separate my weeks within the month because the dates are or the days of the week are the same. So I'm just going to use a gray marker. Like I said earlier, I want to keep my colors uh, subtle so they don't clash with whatever I end up adding to each day. Once I color in the whole week with this gray Tombow marker, I'm going to grab a sticker sheet. So I have been purchasing stickers. I love stickers and I have loads and I don't use them as much as I should. So what I decided to do for my daily journal is try to use up as many sticker sheets as I can. I would like to see them on my spreads, not in my binders. <laughs> so I'm going to try to use up this whole sticker sheet. It is beautiful. I have discovered bare essentials, I think it's called, or no, bare necessities. I will link that shop in the description box for you. But I want to use up this whole sheet. I don't want to put it back in my binder. I want to see it on my spreads. So I want to add a flower to each day of the week and then I can come in and stamp. But it's a great way to add color to my spreads. A flower uh, doesn't have to mean anything when I journal, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to try to use them up. And as you can see, I used up that whole sheet, which made me really happy. And this is a little tip for you. You can use your stamps to build off of a sticker. So I'm just going to use this botanical stamp set from Carrie Bradford to add leaves to my stickers. So it makes your sticker look bigger than it is and it builds off of something you've already added. Once I'm done building on my stickers, I'm going to grab all kinds of different stamps and start stamping like crazy. <laughs> so basically, I just use stamps that will make sense however my day ends up looking. So I end up stamping in 2023, life looks like this. I have this today stamp and I add that to multiple spreads. So I'm basically trying to use the same stamp over and over throughout the week because I have the stamp set out and it just basically helps the process be less tedious. And um, I will grab different types of stamp sets that 
I feel like would work for any day in any type of journaling. I want to bring in color. I want to bring in a little bit of movement before I start journaling. So you'll see me stamp 2023. I use this older stamp set from Studio Calico. It's like a routine stamp, which is perfect for something like this. And I stamp AM and PM. I do also stamp like wintry stamps because it is the winter and it will work perfectly again with any type of journaling and whatever I end up adding on the spread later on. So I'm just trying to use stamps that go with every day and that will fill out certain spots in my journal. Now, I did want to say that I don't know how these layouts are going to end up looking once I add my journaling. Will I be using that schedule on the side? So to the left side of the daily journal, there is a time schedule. I don't know yet, so I tried really hard to keep that space empty just in case I decide to use it and maybe use the right side for my journaling. I do come in with my Tombow marker and color in whatever I can, just again to add some color to my spreads before the month starts. Now I go into my sticker sheets again. I have these tiny, tiny stickers that I got from Stationery Pal. I thought they fit nicely right next to my week stamps and they fill out that space, add some movement there. I just end up using one sticker or two stickers in each box and it's just a great way to use your stickers and fill out that space. One of my goals for my daily journal is to use up as much washi as possible as well. So I'm going to use my washi just to add some color texture to each spread and I'm just adding it randomly so there's no right or wrong way to do this. And basically when I do come in to journal, I can add more as I go. But for now, I'm just adding it to corners and I'm just playing with this. I'll even add, go back and add some to my calendar as well. I just think daily journals are a great way to use up your stash and also a great way to be creative and think outside the box. And as you guys can see, I'm just working on one week right now. I will work on the next week with you guys, but I didn't want to set it up completely. Like I didn't want to set up the whole month completely before I try this out. Because if I don't like how this turns out, I will come back in and change it up for the next few weeks until I find my rhythm, until I find what I like and don't like about this journal. Because you can't have the perfect journal. There is things that I'm going to miss from my Archer and Olive setups. But again, I'm going to make this work and I'm going to try different ways to find my groove in a new journal. Now I go back to my first day in January. I thought I would stamp New Year. I just wanted to bring in more color and also it is the new year. It's uh, a great spot for me to add that in there. I was thinking that my big words, I think I mentioned this earlier, that my big words might sit somewhere on my page. And I was thinking in that top uh, right corner of my page, I would be adding my big words. But for New Year's, I'm just going to go ahead and add it to the side because it is a big deal and it's a great place for me to add it. So I'm using this beautiful stamp set from Studio Calico. It has fillers. Again, it's a great spot for me to add color and add New Year's to my first day of the year. this stamp set from Studio Calico and it has leaves. I don't know why I love those leaves on that stamp set even though the stamp set is not about 
Like it's not just based on fall, basically, but I really wanted to use the leaves. Yes, they are fallish, but I don't care. You guys know me. If I like something, I'm going to stamp it anyway. So I'm going to create like falling leaves to separate my schedule or my time schedule with the day. And it's going to be a great spot for me to add more color. And it's going to fill out that page really nicely. So once I stamp the leaves, I'm just going to grab the fillers and color them in with different colored ink pads. I did also want to mention that coloring in with my Tombows, the Tombows look beautiful on this paper. I can't even explain it. And it's so smooth on this paper. Also, the ink pads, the colors are so crisp and vibrant. Oh my gosh, I can't even explain how much I'm in love with this paper. It's just uh, so white and beautiful. And everything I stamped out looked so crisp. I definitely recommend this daily journal if you're thinking about it. And like I said earlier, I do have a discount code, which I have in the description box for you. Anyways, I am done with the first week of January. Let's move on to our second one. And as you can see, I'm coloring in the days of the week with a different color so I can kind of separate my weeks as I go. Once I color in the days of the week, I'm going to start adding little tidbits to each day. Like I did for the first week, I'm going to just use my stamps and my stickers to bring in some color to my weeks. So I'm going to start with the stamp set. Um, it just has like a box and you can stamp winter, spring, summer, all the good stuff, all the seasons. So I'm going to use that to add the box and then I'm going to stamp winter memories and I'm going to add a few snowflakes as well. It's a great way to kind of represent that it's winter. Uh, maybe it's not going to be snowing that day, but again, it is winter, so it works out perfectly. I also have the stamp set from the Paper Person Shop that has a girl wearing a scarf and a beanie, and it's so cute. It's one of my favorite stamps, so I'm going to end up stamping her as well. And again, I'm just going with the flow here. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I have some winter stamps. It is winter, so I'm just going to stamp whatever works on each spread and it fills up the spread a little bit before I come in to journal and I can always add to it as I journal. Also have a stamp that says hat, scarf, mittens, boots, earmuffs. And it's so adorable. So I'm just going to stamp it right in the center of my day. I will also add the earmuffs as well. I'll come in with my Tombows and color those in. And then we can flip to the next day. So for my next day, I'm still sticking to the whole winter theme because I have my winter stamps out. But I also grabbed, I think they're little notepads from Stationery Pal, and a lot of them were just beautiful and I really wanted to use them. And one of the reasons I even got them was to use them in my daily journal. You can see here, I just grab a pack and I'm gonna use one in the corner. I'll stamp on it. I'll grab some of my stickers and add a little sticker. Now, one thing I do recommend if you have printables, use them as stickers. I just print my printables on sticker paper. I trim them out like watching TV. I'll sit there and trim out my little printables and use them in my daily journal. I have some really beautiful printables that I would like to use and they don't have to go on scrapbooking pages. You can use them in your planners and in your daily journal. So I'm moving on to my next day. I have the stamp set Again, I love the stamp set from Close to My Heart. It has little animals that are wearing scarves and beanies, and I wanted to use it somehow. So what I decided to do was stamp These Are the Days, which again works for any kind of journaling. And then I'm going to use the little bear with the scarf to stamp above it. And then I'm going to color them in, and it's going to bring in a lot of color even before the day starts. This is what I love about setting up your daily journals ahead of time. It really saves you time when the month starts. And basically, even if you don't want to journal on your desk and you want to journal in bed or on the couch, 
All you have to do is just add a few stickers if you wanted to or doodle a few things for your day. And I have enough space even to add photos if I have a favorite photo from that day. So I love setting this up ahead of time and giving myself some grace throughout the month and not having to worry about filling out every single page while I'm journaling. Okay, so January 13th is my husband's birthday and I have these birthday printables which I made into stickers. And I'm just going to go through them and add a few of those stickers to the 13th. I will also be stamping my big word ahead of time. Because it's my husband's birthday, I know that my big word is going to have something to do with him and his birthday. So I'm just going to grab a birthday stamp and stamp, it is your birthday, make a wish in my big word box. Does that make sense? Because I want to use that uh, large box at the top of my journaling page for my big words. So I just went ahead and stamped it out myself. And that way I don't have to worry about it when the 13th comes around. Now for Saturday, I'm just going to use one of my winter stamps again. And I stamp out this little jacket. And I think it says warmest jacket required. And I even use a jacket sticker as well. I just want to use up whatever I can. Now this little sticker, I felt like it was really dark and you couldn't really tell that it was a jacket. So I just go over it with my white paint pen uh, from Archer and Olive. And I do go back into my die cuts. I have gotten these beautiful die cuts from my friend Nicole. And they are adorable. And I've never used them since I've gotten them. It's been months. So I'm just going to use some of them for the next few days. One of them said, Alexa, skip to spring. Because I know by then I'm just going to be fed up with winter. And I'm going to also create a little cluster of stickers in the corner. I just went with my printables. Like I said earlier, I like to print my printables on sticker paper. So I end up adding bundle up. I add a little mug with hot cocoa. Just little things like that. Again, anything that would work. With my journaling, I'm just adding. As I said, you don't know what's happening ahead of time, but these stickers work and these stamps work as well because you're sticking to like seasonal stamps, routine stamps, and stickers that would make sense within the season. But anyways, you guys, I'm almost done. I'm not going to be setting up, like I said, the last two weeks of January. I just want to try this out first and then kind of decide later if this is something I like and enjoy. And if I don't, I can always change it up as uh, the month goes by. Anyways, I am done setting up my January and my Hemlock and Oak. Don't forget, I will be linking everything I use down in the description box for you. I hope you enjoyed watching my setup. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye.